In this episode, we're talking about how to get back into engineering if you didn't get a job immediately after graduation, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time here, and you wanna be a successful engineer, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. Also, join the 1% Nation Facebook group. You can find a link for that in the description. I got this awesome message tonight from Brandon Johnson. Thank you so much, Brandon, for reaching out. So I graduated from college in 2015 with a Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering. I have no experience in any way in my field. I haven't done any internships or co-ops and my overall GPA was not that great. And I'm asking for your advice on what I should do to start working in my field. Great question, Brandon. Thanks again. So I got back to Brandon right away, gave him a whole bunch of advice. And that's basically what this video is. And guys, this is exactly why you've heard me say before that your job hunt begins during freshman year. Comment below on your number one job searching tip because we wanna hear from you. You should be working for four years straight to have the best possible career placement because all four years you can be doing things that bolster your resume, you can be building relationships, garnering experience, so that you can best position yourself to even have a job before graduation. Lots of engineers do that. Shout out to Paul Tabanowski, who had a full-time offer before the holidays in his last semester of engineering at University of Delaware. So it's definitely not too late, Brandon. That's the first thing that you need to think about is you need to be confident that you can accomplish this. 1% Nation has heard me talk so much about belief and making sure that you can actually see it in your mind, you accomplishing that goal that you want, because otherwise you're not gonna work hard enough to actually actually change your life and shift your career. So just be confident that you're in the right spot. You found the right community. We're going to help you out starting with these five tips on what you can do to change your life, change your career and get that mechanical engineering job in 2018, Brandon. Tip number one is you need to tell your story. Have a story ready as to why you have taken off two to three years after graduation. You're gonna be asked by not only prospective employers during phone interviews and certainly face-to-face -face interviews, but even while you're networking, even while you're doing other things to position yourself, to change your career, people are gonna ask, oh, what have you been up to for the last two or three years? What have you been doing? And you're not gonna be able to say, well, I couldn't get a job, I applied to 100, or I didn't have very good grades, or I didn't have the confidence, so I gave up. You can't say any of that. You need to tell a version of your authentic story. For example, maybe you have been volunteering in your community. Maybe you have been giving back and spending a lot of time doing some other stuff. And you can say that, well, I took a job that was outside of the industry and I didn't really plan on it, but here I am two, three years later. And turn this tough situation into a positive highlight so that your first impression is really good. Other examples would be maybe you had a sick family member or a death in the family and you were looking after your family and you took some job that was outside of mechanical engineering, you didn't really plan for this, but here you are. Again, you're framing yourself as a hero, you're turning this downside into a positive. Another example would be that you weren't exactly sure the type of mechanical engineering that you wanted to focus on, you wanted to be absolutely positive about your passion, so you took a job in something else and now you're absolutely focused and retargeted on this exact industry, which Brandon says is manufacturing, and you're turning this negative situation into a, I found my passion, I wanna go forward now. And people wanna help you reach your goals if you're very passionate and that is your life mission to get into manufacturing engineering. Tip number two is you need to become a personal brand. You need to reinvent yourself as an engineer. Instead of just putting social stuff on your Instagram or post about whatever you do on Facebook and if you don't put out anything on LinkedIn right now, which you probably don't, you need to start talking more about engineering stuff. You need to position yourself as a thought leader in manufacturing engineering. This is a great time Time to launch some sort of blog so you can offer your opinion your viewpoints on news in the industry technologies in the industry companies in the industry and start to make sure that people connect you brandon with a manufacturing mechanical engineer this is basically what i've done through this platform a year ago i was still filming weddings in vancouver british columbia my personal brand was a wedding videographer i was doing no content no community building no nothing in engineering mentorship and in a year's time look at what's happened right and that's really what personal brand is it's pretty much the first thing that someone thinks about when they think of you so if you're making new connections in the industry if you're framing your LinkedIn to be ready for your future mechanical engineering job then that is the first thing that people should think about is thought leader in manufacturing engineering so again post engineering stuff on your Instagram and definitely start releasing content on LinkedIn start that blog and start meeting people in that sphere by putting out content and make sure that they know that you are someone that they should be connected to that they want to know 
in this industry. It also really helps when employers vet you out and look at your social media. They look at your Facebook and Instagram, your LinkedIn, they say, who is Brandon Johnson? And they're gonna see all this content, they're gonna see this thought leadership, they're gonna see this personal branding about engineering and say, yup, we want this guy. Number three is a network a lot. And sure, yes, of course, everyone is gonna say that. I'm gonna give you some specific tactics within that. Tactic number one is you need to reconnect with all of your university engineering friends and more specifically, your professors. If you got bad grades in certain mechanical engineering classes, maybe not those professors, maybe choose the ones where you actually got okay enough grades. Maybe they will be able to help you out. Again, tell that story as to why you have delayed your mechanical engineering career by two, three years. They will be able to empathize with you if you do. Tactic number two, within networking is you need to join professional organizations. You need to join the National Society of Black Engineers. You need to join the American Society of Mechanical Engineering chapter in your area. You need to join the Society for Manufacturing Engineers in your area. You need to build physical face-to-face -face, real world relationships with people in your area, in your sphere, so that you connect with them. And when opportunities come up, when connections arise, you will be the first person that they think of. 80% of the jobs in America never go advertised because they only want somebody who is already connected to their network. They want a human to human connection. They want a referral. They don't want a cold resume. Notice that there are no resume, no apply to a million job type suggestions in this video because those don't work. It's all about positioning yourself to meet more people and build your network and build your sphere of influence so that you can attract these people who can change your life. And that's what joining professional organizations will do. You will position yourself next to ambitious, thought leader, active, successful people and maybe an opportunity will come up and they will think of you or maybe you can, after building a relationship, inquire about opportunities to these people. And tactic number three within networking is to leverage your content on LinkedIn, leverage your activity on LinkedIn and just connect with as many mechanical engineers that you can in your regional area on LinkedIn and after they see you engaging with other people's articles and commenting and adding value and becoming a thought leader with a manufacturing engineering specifically in your region, which Brandon told me was Atlanta, you you will be able to build more and more connections and maybe ask people for coffee and just some digital relationship on LinkedIn could amount to a connection that actually can produce an opportunity for you. And tip number four is informational interviews. Once you have told your story, once you have positioned yourself as a personal brand, and once you have started to meet more people in the industry, you can ask these warm contacts to come into their place of employment for an informational interview. So you can learn more about what that company does. You can learn more about what that professional does. You can learn if that is the type of manufacturing engineering that you want for your career. All of these suggestions are intertwined because if you did start that blog, if you did start producing thought leadership type content on LinkedIn, you can leverage that to get yourself informational interviews. You can say, hey, I wanna feature your position or your company or your sector in my engineering blog. I want to help share your story. I wanna bring you exposure. I wanna put you on the throne, you on the red carpet and talk about you. People never say no to that. How many people do you think say no when I ask them to do interviews? Only the ones that are scared, which is rare, but it is a very powerful thing to provide a story about them. And now changes from an ask, hey, can I come in for an informational interview to a give? You can add value to them. If you're not sure what an informational interview is, go to the channel, search for it, because I have a couple videos about that. It's a very powerful mechanism to building a relationship that can later on result in an opportunity. And tip number five is volunteer, build a portfolio, build some experience for yourself. If telling your story, becoming a personal brand, networking a lot, and conducting informational interviews hasn't resulted in a job already, then maybe you need to volunteer some time at an engineering firm. Maybe you need to create your own portfolio of SolidWorks projects and 3D projects printing things, whatever is going to be most applicable for the type of position that you want for your career, start honing that skill set, developing that skill set even further and advancing it such that it is a no brainer to hire you because you are already doing the sort of stuff that you would get hired for at the professional level. Because not having any experience, no internships, no co-ops before graduation is kind of a bad thing, but this is your ability to start actually working on things. Maybe there's an engineering without borders group in your area who is building clean water systems and they can use some mechanical engineering insight or you can be a part of that design team and again, start honing some skills outside of that first professional job that you're gonna land this year, Brandon. But if tips one through four have not yielded success already, you need to actually start honing the craft, building the skill sets that you would get hired for because this makes it a no brainer for your future employer. I hope these five tips help you this year, Brandon, and anyone else who is trying to get back in engineering 
engineering after taking some sort of career hiatus or not taking a job immediately after graduation? Comment below on which of these tips resonated with you and which of these you're gonna deploy during your next job search, 1% Nation, because if you notice, all of these tips can apply to anyone, not necessarily someone getting back into engineering, but anyone who is searching for any type of opportunity can learn from these tips. If you have a question about anything in your engineering journey, comment below. If you're not in the Facebook group yet, you are missing out, make sure you join that. We have about 500 engineers, there's a link below. And if you wanna be a successful engineer, guys, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. As always, thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer. Cheers!